Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Yes, we're brewing a mystery beer. Actually, I'm brewing two mystery beers, but this one, because I don't want the video to be a mile long, is gonna focus on the oatmeal stout. Yes, the oatmeal stout. I'm shooting for, I believe it was like 4.8% ABV, and I took it from a recipe that was considered what I considered, and many other people told me, who didn't know the title of the recipe, the smoothest stout they'd ever had. So I modified the recipe a little, hopefully it doesn't jack it up. Um, the recipe is all over the place, it's a mess. <laughs> I, this is a beer I did many, many, many years ago, and I have tons of step mashes, I had all kinds of crazy stuff. And I'm gonna keep with everything, minus the recipe, I modified it a little, and I had to scale it a little because I'm doing six gallons, and yeah, yeah, <laughs> this is gonna be a mess, okay. But if it comes out even close to what my original oatmeal stout came out, it'll be all worth it, and I mean all worth it. And why am I calling this a mystery stout? Well, because I'm not gonna talk about the yeast. Maybe I might mention it at the end, but yeah, we're gonna brew a six gallon split batch, separate into two, three gallons, and then we're gonna ferment it at 20 degrees difference. Yes, that's right, 20 Fahrenheit, different. One will be at around 75 degrees, one will be at 55 degrees. I could probably push it to 25 degrees of separation, but I'm already gonna be on the edge of possibly getting off flavors and I'm hoping not to, but uh, I'm gonna have fun. So if you're in Jacksonville, let me know because when I go to you know, put this on keg, it'll definitely be a taste test we'll wanna check out. It'll either be awful or it'll be amazing or it'll be, one will be good, one will be bad, I don't know. I'm hoping for amazing. So let's get right into this. First of all, like, subscribe, hit share, come on. Wherever they move that damn subscribe button, come on. Yeah, and the majority of you don't hit subscribe. I'm not asking for notifications. I just wanna grow the channel. I wanna hit 7,500 if we can by Christmas or at least New Year's. I don't know if we're gonna make it, but I would love to make it. So come on, my Christmas present to me, please. Thank you. Appreciate it. And if you've already subscribed, double check it too, because we've had some weird issues. I've had it with other channels that I subscribe to and I'm like, what the hell? I've been fixing that. And I do, I, I try to find small home brewing channels a lot of times and occasionally it's not worth it, but the majority are actually trying really hard, working really hard and I hit subscribe because I appreciate their effort and I know what they're going through and I know they're learning just like I did and I'm still learning. If I wasn't learning, I would get bored and do something else, but I'm always learning. So let's go into the grain bill. First of all, I'm going a little crazy with the oatmeal. That was one of the major adjustments I made. We're at six pounds, eight ounces. No, not oatmeal, Maris Otter. And oh my gosh, I haven't smelled or brewed with Maris Otter in probably over a year. It smells so good. I forgot what the smell. I've been focusing on Pilsners and Golden Promise. But six pounds, eight ounces of Maris Otter. I'll move over here so we can put the numbers over here and information and the metrics. Yeah, we'll put the metric. Two pounds of oatmeal. Yeah, two pounds. and. Shockingly, I'm seeing a lot of people complaining about oatmeal, but they're talking about, hey, if I use old fashioned regular oatmeal, I've got to cook it first. I've never cooked it and I get amazing gravity. So I have a feeling that it's already kind of pre-gelatinized. Plus I'm doing 90 minute mashes at reasonably decent temperatures. So that's probably why I haven't had an issue. This is the quick, quick grits or quick oats, whatever you call it. This is the first time I've ever used quick cook oatmeal. So I am using the ones that supposedly are pre-gelatinized and we'll see how that goes. I'm hoping I still get that nice grainy tastes that I get from all those different grains, including the oatmeal. If I don't, I'm going back to old fashioned because I get just such an amazing flavor from those oats and I'm hoping for the same here, but we'll see. Then we got 12 ounces of dark Munich. And like I said, the recipe is all over the place, but it came out so amazing. I don't care. I'm going to keep it all over the place. Six, six, 0.4 ounces of biscuit malt, give it a nice breadiness. 6.4 ounces of chocolate wheat. If you like chocolate, chocolate wheat is just so much smoother. 4.4 um, ounces of roasted barley, gotta get a hint of coffee in there, you know what I'm saying? Four ounces of black patten. I know, this is where I could have just increased one of the others, but like I said, it came out amazing and I'm gonna keep going. It's gonna only get crazier. I won't say worse, because it came out amazing. 3.6 ounces of Carafa Special 2. That's gonna give us a really nice, solid, dark stout. And then I have, which yes, I'm lactose intolerant, but I'll drink some anyways. Take one for the team, should we say, but six ounces of lactose, AKA milk sugar, AKA non-fermentable sugars. And then we only have one hop, or yeah, one hop addition at 
50 minutes, even though we got a 90 minute boil. And yes, I'm no steam condenser. We're kicking this old school. So, but yeah, we're gonna do Warrior from Yakima Chief at 14.2 alpha at 50 minutes, 50, I know, odd, and 0.75 ounces. I played with that until I finally said, you know what, that's just what I'm gonna do. And the yeast, we'll talk about that later. We'll call this the mystery stout, or since it's close to Halloween, which during the filming, not probably when I publish it, you can call it Franken stout. <coughs> Hint, but hey, yeah, I'm, on the IPA we're doing old school, ringing everything. Over here, I've got the feet. I do have the small batch adapter already installed. And yeah, I think it's time to get the temperature going. Oh, and this thing's got crazy step mashes too. <laughs> I told you it was crazy. Starting at 112 Fahrenheit for 20, 122 for 20, 148 for 30, 156 for 10, 168 for 10. It's just stupid. But you know, I didn't really want to make that many changes because it came out amazing. And you know, when you make too many changes, suddenly you're like, ah, that sucked. Or it's not nearly as good as it was before. So it's an insane recipe within some insane steps, but I'm sticking to it. We're gonna have fun. Let's get brewing. We're almost at mash temp. I had to adjust my brewing salts and I had to adjust my water because I forgot we're doing six gallons. So I need an extra half gallon of water and I'll put the brewing salts over here. And I ran, ran out of Epsom salt. Yeah, so I had to run to the store to remember what I went and bought. Okay, here we go. Let's get mashed in. Okay, we're back. We're mashed in. I'm gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes. And while it's sitting, I'll get the recirculation all set up, get ready to go, and we'll start the recirculation. And we'll resume. Okay, I'm getting ready to turn the recirculation on. We're sitting at 113 degrees, should be at 112. I've got it at 65% power, and we'll be there for 20 minutes. I know, a little crazy. And we'll go to 122 for 20, 148 for 30, 156 for 10, and 168 for 10. I know what the theory was back when I did that. That was all about enzymes and breaking everything down and getting a really good efficiency while maximizing uh, everything in every grain. So, yeah. A little unnecessary, but I don't want to alter the recipe too much because it was so smooth before. So we're going to keep it that. But let's go ahead and get the recirculation going. I've got the thing plugged in. We'll turn it on. Uh, let's see how we do. Mm, so actually, that's kind of nice. Got a little trickle going, not too fast. Let's slow it down a bit. We'll be here for 20 minutes. I'll kick it up to 122 in about 20, and we'll go from there. Okay, I just kicked it up to 148. I did the 122. We were there for 20 minutes. Once we hit 148, we'll be there for 30 minutes. I know it seems crazy, but it came out amazing last time. Sometimes crazy is really good. And once we get there for 30 minutes, we'll then go up to 156, which I forgot for 10, before moving to 168 for 10. <sighs> crazy recipes you create when you're first brewing and first learning how to brew, but Sometimes those crazy things come out really good. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I've got some friends that'll probably be looking forward to it too, because I've got a lot of uh, people who appreciate stouts. And one will be very cool fermented, and one will be very warm fermented. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I just pulled the green basket. We're good. I'm gonna let that drip while I heat up a gallon of sparge water. Okay, we're getting close to a boil. So I need to start stirring. Make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom from all that oatmeal. Oatmeal gets really sticky sometimes. It's definitely a little bit of gunk down there, but not much. There you go. It's like chocolate milk. Nice and frothy. Or more like hot chocolate. Okay, I'm gonna fire off my timers. We've got a 90 minute boil. We have 40 minutes before we have our first and only hop addition. And then the last 10 minutes, we'll put the lactose in it, yeast nutrient, whirl flock tablet, anything else I can think to throw in, you know what I mean? So hit start and there's all my timers. We're good. Okay, and since I'm not using a steam condenser, I probably need to open some windows, turn on some fans. Yeah. Especially when the other one gets going, there's gonna be a lot of moisture in here. I'm gonna get the dehumidifier going too. 
Okay, we have about 10 seconds, I'm counting seven seconds, before we need to do our first edition. Yakima Chief Warrior Hops at 14.2, and it's a 50 minute edition. And that's it, that's our only edition. So, two, there we go. Put that in there, nice and wet. And that's it. Until we get towards the last 10 minutes, I don't have anything else to add. Last 10 minutes, like I said, you know, yeast nutrient, world flock tablet, Pretty all, pretty much all I can think of at, at the moment. Okay, we're in the last 10 minutes. So clear, there we go. Got a whirl flock tablet and some yeast nutrient. That's it. <laughs> we'll have to go for another 10 minutes. I'm gonna get the jaded Scylla ready and get my hoses ready so we can chill that bad boy down. Okay, we're in the last 37 seconds, but I forgot the lactose. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and just dump it in there. As long as it melts, it don't matter. And I'm not worried, it'll melt quick. But I'm sure probably in the last 10 seconds, we'll know here in about a minute or last 10 seconds probably. Oh man, it's hot. Yep, like I said. Whew. I'll go ahead and kill that. Clear. And I'm gonna kill the temperature, drop the jaded Scylla, which I already cleaned, I'm not worried. Ah, oh, man. We'll make sure all that got dissolved in there, shall we say, or whatever you want to call it. Melt it, dissolved. Okay, here we go. Mm. That's not good, we don't want that to fall. Well, I'm a big mess today. It's all good. Drop that bad boy in there. Clamp this back so it doesn't fall. Actually, we're gonna need it for agitation. I call it poor man's agitation. Looks good. I'll get the hot matter out of here. And I'm gonna go ahead and kill the temp. Power. Zero. Temperature. Uh, set it to 39, it's a 206, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna get this chilled down. Once I get it chilled down, I'm gonna move it to the fermenter and we'll continue. This is why I tell you, and I'll put a link below, get a jaded Scylla. I'm already in the 150s and dropping fast, like crazy fast, and it's just cold water. Well, faucet water, so tap room. And I'm in Florida, so my tap water is pretty warm. And it's just crashing, like crazy fast. So, yeah. Okay. Once we get chilled down, we'll be good to go. And like I said, we'll move it to the fermenter. Okay. <laughs> My back is killing me. I mean, killing me. And I still gotta, yeah. So, but here is the oatmeal stout. <clears throat> More like I said, wonder stout, Franken stout. Here's what's going on. Okay. I'm gonna ferment this at 55 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna fer ferment this at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. I didn't realize I couldn't get enough uh, heat going. So I ordered a couple of these, one for one of the IPAs and one for the stout. Yeah, it's a heat wrap. I'm gonna be able to put that on with some painter's tape so I can get some warmth here because I'm not sure if my 72 to 73 degree room is going to let this sit at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And I know a lot of people are like, why are you doing this? Seriously, you're talking 20 degrees Fahrenheit difference, okay? Uh, yeah, 20 degrees. Well, White Labs sent me Frankenstout yeast. Yes, Franken yeast or Frankenstout yeast, however you want to refer to it. And if you don't know anything about this, it has, or at the time, they had 96 different yeasts. It has every single one of the yeasts. They literally just threw all 96 in here and said, good luck, <laughs> see what happens. And I thought, you know what would be great is to take this and just separate it by 15, 20 degrees, and I was thinking maybe 70 and 60, which is 10 degrees. And I went researching and researching, and I realized that someone's already done something like this. Brulosophy, yes, did a 60 to 70. So he said he really didn't notice any major differences. So let's push that envelope. I am told at 75 there is a possibility I will get off flavors, but there is also a chance I will get lots of Belgian results. Over here, I was told to probably, or whichever one's the cool one, there's the cool one, there's the hot one, I already labeled them. I was told 
60 degrees would probably be pretty good, but yeah, there are lager yeasts in here. So I'm like, let's drop it to 55. I almost thought about doing 50. 25 degrees of separation, but we'll go with 55. So I've got 55 degrees Fahrenheit over here, 75 degrees Fahrenheit over here. I'm going to put the chillers on top. So I have it glycol chilled. I'm gonna put my tilt hydrometers in. I'm debating about putting Clarity Firm. I think I will just that way I know I don't have to worry about people with gluten issues. And I've got a very, very nice yeast starter. And I just took a sniff of it and I'm gonna tell you, I don't know what it smells like. It's got a lot going on. I don't know, it's like I smell some of the lager, I smell some of the wheat type yeast, you know, the yeast used for German yeast. I smell some Belgian, I smell everything. It's like crazy going on in there. It's like a party. I mean, seriously, it's a party in there. So we're gonna go ahead and I've also been doing a little different with the yeast for this time around. What I did is I started a very small starter and I just kept feeding it and feeding it over 48 hours. So this bad boy is a pretty decent size yeast starter, but I didn't want to have any issues. And I did four of these from one packet of yeast. Yeah. Now I'm wondering if I should have just pitched the yeast and not done a, not do a yeast starter because who knows, maybe the yeast starter caused certain warmer yeast to you know, be more prevalent and the lower temperature ones to drop out. Maybe it created a different issue. I don't know. You don't know until you try it. So, hey, gosh, it's just got so much going on. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this. While I'm pouring this, why don't you make sure that subscribe button looks good, the like button, yeah, appreciate it. You got some painkillers, oh my gosh, I can't take most of them, but maybe I'll have a good beer after this because my back is killing me. And yeah, I've already had a pale ale. Okay, there's one. There is a chance this is just gonna be like good and nasty. One may not ferment, one may take off and not taste good. They both, both may taste great. They both, both might taste very similar. They might, and my expectation is that they are going to taste very different. But it's just a cross my fingers and hope. If I can catch the stir bar, there it is. Yeah, it's a lot going on in there. Somebody, somebody made a recommendation to do a t-shirt, you know, yeast sniffer. I thought that was hilarious. My wife didn't find it very funny. That made me laugh even more. So now I think it's even funnier. So yeah, we'll work on that one. Okay, so these are gonna need to be clean because yeah, you can see the staining from going for two solid days of just feeding the, I was feeding the proper starter to it, mixed with some water, of course, and just kept feeding it and feeding it. Let's think about it, what I did, 16 ounces total for each because I had a total of 64 ounces between three, no four. So yeah, 16 ounces and each starter. Okay, I'm gonna get this done, get it all connected, get the temperatures going, get the hydrometers in there, tilt hydrometers. Anything I used, I'll throw the links down below. Some may, some may not be affiliate. Um, i wait for my review on this, but looks pretty good. I mean, the reviews were actually above average compared to most, and I got it, I ordered it late last night and got it first thing this morning. <laughs> I was impressed. Amazon does not always deliver like that. Sometimes they promise it and it doesn't happen, but this happened. So yeah. Oh, and did I tell you, we were at 79.1% brew house efficiency. I think estimated mash efficiency was somewhere around 60 or 76 or something. I was estimating 72%. Now keep in mind, okay? This is what I'm talking about when you're talking about efficiencies. I only had one choice for flaked oats in Beersmith that really made any sense. And I used Quaker instant flaked oats. So the diastatic, diastatic power for Quaker might be considerably higher than whatever this thing is expecting me to use. So although my brew house efficiency, my mash efficiencies are all extremely high, there is a possibility that had I had the correct item to put in here, I might've been 72, 74, 75. I don't think it would have been that far off. I think it would have still been up around the 76 area, but yeah, I'm happy. It's all good. It's not gonna be a 4.8 or it's gonna be maybe a 5.3% to a 5.4% based on final gravity, but I'm good with that. That's still very sessionable. Cheers. Thank you.